Do we heard uh, that China yeah. there were leaked uh, files that exposed millions of China's top Communist Party members, tying them to UK firms, firms around the world on Wall Street in Australia, and there was the, this was the Australian newspaper that broke this. Isn't that crazy? What's what's going on? You, you, can any of you tell me? You can't honestly see that we are already infiltrated by the Communist Party. Hmm. Hmm? We all see it. When um, when they were buying up, and I'm not Chinese hating right now. I'm just yeah. stating the fact. When they were buying up all the toilet paper and the baby formulas, and during our uh, lockdowns and our you know, everything was running out. Do you honestly think they did that because they were going to make a shitload of money in a communist state? Do you not ask yourself, were they ordered to empty us out from our medicine, our baby formulas and our toilet paper? Even though we, that's a lie, we never ran out of toilet paper, just, you know, government and the media made a big yeah. deal. No, but it's a, right? good, it's a good point, though. All the property companies buying all the PPE gear, sending it over to China. Yeah. Oh, did we forget about that? We did. <laughs> Have a look at right now. And I'm, again, not hating. I'm just, I'm a very curious human being. How many Asians have you seen not wearing a mask? Mm. How many? Mm. Is it because they're seriously concerned about the coronavirus or is it a order by their governing body? Mm. There is Pompeo, is it? Mike, yeah, Mike Pompeo, yeah. He came out and said that Chinese students, university students in, uh, in the United States had an, uh, um, like a Zoom meeting yeah. and they used fake names so the party could not know that it was them that was speaking against the Communist Party. Yeah. They live outside of China, yet they still fear the country they left. Mm. How many Chinese here in Australia are in the same predicament that they still have to answer to their, to their old government? Yeah. So yeah. to the Chinese people of Australia, this is your country. Yeah. You are one of us. If there is a problem, speak up. Yeah, that's right. And I, I've I've heard that that opinion many times where I said it. they're not all Communist Party stooges. Mm. A lot of them are trying to escape China. Yep. You know, and a lot of them are buying up land in Western Sydney, for example, yep. or in rural Australia. Don't assume that they're just Chinese Communist Party that want to build an airfield there and invade Australia. Like that's not the case. A lot of like. I mean, it's yet to be seen that that is the case for any of them. But don't assume that because a lot of them are just trying to get their money out of China because mm -hmm. they because it'll be confiscated or whatever. They just they want to they want they're like anyone else. They have a family. They want to retain control of what they work hard for, and they're worried that the Chinese Communist Party will try and get it. I'll I'll tell you a story. It's a true story. It happened to me, and it and it opened my eyes to a lot of things. And this 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 probably. You know, close home with you. Many years ago, when I had a uh, cement rendering business, and I had a, you know, quite a few guys working for me, I was doing very, very well. Thank God. Um, I had one Syrian guy. Mm. I had Romanians. I had uh, Portuguese. Um, I had Lebanese, but there was one Syrian guy, and I loved him. He was a great guy. He worked for me for about one year, one and a half years. And in those one and a half years, any chance he got, he would hammer um, Hafz al-Assad, you know, the father of Bashar al-Assad. He'd say, he's bad, he's this, he's that. He'd give it to him. After a year and a half, I hired another Syrian guy. But my original Syrian employee... I'm saying Syrian, they're Australian, but, you know, it's to tell you the story. He went quiet because mm. he didn't know him. Mm. So as a joke one day after finishing work and we're all leaving, I said to my worker, how come you're not hammering Hafz al-Assad anymore? He goes, Romeo, I'm scared. I said, scared of what? He said, the other Syrian guy, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he knows. Mm. So I'll stay quiet. Mm. 
mm. because I've got family in Syria and if he knows somebody, he can just make one phone call and my family disappears. Yeah. And I knew then and there that people do escape whatever pos- bad position they're in, but they still have family still stuck in that position. Yeah. So I asked myself this question, are the Chinese Australians in that same predicament? Where they have to follow an order or my family disappears. Mm, possibly. Possibly. Probably. Mm. Yeah, I come raise her in the most probable reason. I know is, that family uh, break, as I said before, a twig that breaks your ankle. And, you know, but it's a really... I find it weird how they just follow every single thing that is said by China. Yet mm. they live here. Yeah. Then... But that doesn't make me hate them. Yeah. It makes me ask, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be very interesting. Um, I, I wanted to touch on um, an interesting, because, I mean, there have been a bunch of different topics we've covered today. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is unifying as well, um, which has been very unusual for the show. Normally, we, we, we go after politicians, yeah. but we've actually got an example of a politician doing good. So, have you heard of Tulsi Gabbard before?